And welcome everyone to another edition of RF Sports Radio. I am Rodney Fisher, this time solo. As you guys can see, as we get ready to preview Game 5, uh, let's start kind of recapping a little bit from Game 4 from this Mavs and Timberwolves series. If you guys watched the show the last time, we talked about how important it was going to be for the bench to come alive and how we thought the Mavs would really close it out. I mean, Kyrie had a... Uh, uh, undisputed 14-0 record and closed out games, and the Mavs couldn't get it done. They lost 105 to 100, and really that four quarters where the Mavs just kind of couldn't find their way. Luka couldn't find his shot. Kyrie couldn't really get going really throughout the entire game, and then of course our bitch, our role players, uh, just couldn't make shots. I mean they had wide open threes, wide open shots, couldn't really make any shots, even though they were able to get some of the starters in in foul trouble. Uh, but Minnesota came out in game four with just a ton of energy. I mean, they came out ready to play. Uh, they seemed like they knew what they had. They knew they had a hill to climb, but they were ready to climb that hill. And for the first game of this series, we saw Anthony Edwards really come alive. He had 29 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists, almost a, almost a triple-double. And then Cat, for everybody been talking about Cat throughout this series, 25 points, and he actually went 1-4. Uh, I'm sorry, two for uh, four for five from the three-point line. Four three-pointers uh, in one game when he only had four the entire series. So it shows, goes to show you that they really came out ready to play. We're going to kind of let it all go. I mean, Cat led everyone in plus minus and plus plus 15 when he was on the floor. Got into foul trouble early and actually couldn't play the, play the end of that fourth quarter. But it didn't matter. The, the, the Timberwolves had everything really in their grasp from, from really the beginning of the game. The Mavs are playing catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up all the time. And I think for the first time we saw the Mavs have that low energy, that fatigue start to set in a little bit on these guys, especially the younger guys. Uh, and some of the players even talked about that. So we're going to go back to a quick little interview with Daniel Gafford after the game. Where he talks about the lack of energy the team had uh, and also the, the missing piece of Derek Lively and how big that was for him in particular. So let's hear from Daniel Gafford right now. Business, the biggest disconnect um, when it comes to tonight's game. Mm. I can't put my finger on it. You know, I felt like we fought all the way to the end. We just missed a couple of shots at the end. It was some great looks. We got the looks that we wanted. It just didn't fall for us. Daniel, um, I wanted to ask about just Anthony Edwards coming off of them and kind of leading them as a, you know, a young guy. What do you think about his performance tonight? Yeah, he came out with energy. He can't put too many words to that. He came out ready to play. Uh, Dan, you've been playing with Derek obviously uh, most of the year. First of, first off, how good has he been, and how did you guys have to try to adjust without him tonight? Um, I mean, Derek has been great. He came out ready to play night in, night out. He's been picking up the slack with me, of course. Which last couple of games, I haven't been really ready to play. I feel like you know, I'm in the team down in a lot of areas. And he really helps me motivate myself because you know, as hard as he's working, I want to be able to do the same thing. So I got to be better for him. Um, and all honesty, you know, we just have to have that next man up mentality and just be able to kind of like withstand that punch that they're trying to throw at us. Yeah, and when Luca was up here, he said that he himself had a little bit of a lack of energy tonight. Would you say that that was something among the team, or was that just an assessment that Luca made for himself? It might have been 50 50, I would say. You know, I really can't talk for everybody else. I know for a fact that I didn't come out ready to play at all. My energy was low. And I had to really just kind of, you know, dig deep, kind of like pull just some type of energy out just to be able to kind of come out and just play basketball at the end of the day. Those guys weren't going to go down easy. They came out tonight and they hit us in the mouth and we had to adjust to it. Um, I wanted to ask you one more thing. So you said you felt like you kind of let the team down. Um, I know like you're a hard worker. That's going to motivate you going into game five, isn't it? Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, um, this this one hurts. I was expecting to be happy at the end of the game, and now we're pissed off. That was Daniel Gafford for the Dallas Mavericks, uh, our star starting center, talking a little bit about how. Not only missing Derek Lively, you know, so much energy for him, 
but he felt like they just came in and just weren't quite ready to play today at all. Just didn't have the energy. And they feel like it was there. He's very candid, very open with us in the media about kind of the things they were facing going into the game. Um, you know, Royce made a big point about the bench, how the bench has got to give you 25, where they gave you exactly 25 points uh, in that game. Yeah, Maxi Kleber getting some minutes. He played 13 minutes. Um, you even had Josh uh, Dwight Powell playing some minutes in the game, which going into it, I was so concerned about having him play a lot of minutes. I'm glad Kleber was available to play 13. Josh, uh, Dwight only played three minutes. But still, man, uh, anytime you can survive a game, <laughs> surviving Josh Powell, uh, Dwight Powell, as I like to call it, because when he gets in the game, we just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, he's going to put in a lot of effort, but with not a lot of results. He's not going to score a lot of points. He's not going to get a lot of rebounds. He may get a few fouls. He's definitely going to get hit in the face at some point throughout the game. It's just, it's just kind of how he plays. Uh, but Cleaver came in, gave us some good minutes. He was plus two, only had two points. And then J- Jalen Hardy, um, again, getting more and more minutes as these playoffs start to go along. Had 12 minutes uh, in the last game and scored 13 points leading all the scores on the bench. So, again, it's, it, Hardaway still doesn't get in the game in this game. There's two games in a row we haven't seen Hardaway play, not one game. Um, so here in game five tonight, it's going to be interesting to see if Kidd even tries to throw him out there for any reason, just to make a couple of threes or take a couple of fouls, uh, depending on how the flow of the game is going. To me, the biggest tale for that game in game four was just the fact that Kyrie really just didn't didn't have his best game. He was 6-18 from the floor, 1-6 for six from the three-point line. Did make all his free throws, uh, which is good. But he only had 16 points. And now if he would have scored his 25 points, Luka with his 28 points, I think they would have had a great chance to win the game and close it out. Uh, but he really didn't give you that. And then Derrick Jones only had 9, which is fine. He played great defense. P.J. Washington had 10. And then Gafford had 12, 6-6, uh, six for six, a perfect night at the uh in in from the field as well too so for game five let's set the stage for game five you know minnesota got a lot of momentum uh but let's face it they have not played very well at home at all they've lost more home games uh this playoffs this postseason uh and they've won more on the road so even with their two losses to even with their loss to dallas so it's going to be interesting really here to see uh what kind of team comes out for the timberwolves uh, Carl Anthony Towns does not play very well at home, so I don't know if he could back up this performance uh, from Game Four into Game Five. Anthony Edwards kind of gets it to his head a little bit, especially in on, on at home as well too. So this will be interesting, man. I mean, they're coming off that Game Seven win, but that Game Seven win was on the road. It wasn't at home. They have not played well at home at all. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I know the crowd is going to be there. They're going to be excited, but if they can't get out early, if the mask can kind of quiet the crowd, uh, then I think they have a good shot at it. The other thing is Luca thrives on the road. He likes being in front of enemy crowd, if you will. Uh, he likes being in front of the ops. You know, he likes to kind of shoot those th- threes and quiet the crowd. He likes to talk to people in the stands. He likes to get into it, referees. So he's going to be in his element tonight. For sure, in this game five, a closeout game. So I expect a big night from Luca, and I expect some of that energy to get to Kyrie and have a better night than he had uh, in game four. Because let's face it, I, I can't see him having two back-to-back sub-20 point nights, uh, especially in the postseason. That's just something I can't see. And the Mavs don't typically lose back-to-back games. I mean, they really haven't done that since early March of this year. So. Uh, a lot of good things in that kind of play in the factor of that. The other thing is, will we see Derek Lively tonight in the game? Now, he was moved up to questionable today. And in the Mavs uh, language, typically questionable means you're going to play. I mean, Luke has been questionable probably the ent- entire postseason for sure. Maybe even some of the end of the season. Questionable with the knee sprain and, uh, of course, his left ankle, things like that. But he's always played every game. So in Mavs language, when they say questionable, typically the guy's going to play. And uh, as you heard from Daniel Gafford, they need Derek Lively in the game. They need his athleticism. They need his youth. They need his energy. They need him on the floor. Um, so if they can get him back in there and kind of and, and get a boost from him coming back in the game, 
then I think the Mavs are the winning hands down, no problem at all. Now, if they don't have Derek Lively, if they come out lack of days ago with their energy, if they can sit back on their laurels and think, okay, well, we just got to win one game, then you give Minnesota Timberwolves, a dangerous young team that doesn't know any better, a chance to feel like they have a chance to win this series by going back to Dallas. So you don't want to give them any kind of momentum. You don't want to give them any kind of um, uh, uh, thought, thought that they can, hey, we go back to Dallas, we can do this. You want to close this thing out completely tonight, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think kids going to have the guys ready to play. I think that loss was a wake up, <clears throat> a wake up call for them. And Luca thrives on the road. So I see this as being an easy, easy game five win for the Mavs. But well, we are taking your predictions as well. Make sure you guys hit us up either on TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram, or even the Facebook page. Let us know what you think about Game 5 tonight. And we will see what happens in Game 5 in Minnesota as the Mavs with a 3-1 lead and try to close this out against the Minnesota Timberwolves and move on to the NBA Finals. See y'all soon.